Hello, everybody. All right. All right. Hello. All right. <laughs> we are so happy to have the two of you here. That as uh, as someone's sweatshirt said in the film, what a blast. That was uh, pretty incredible and strikes me not only as a document of this incredible undertaking, these, these seemingly impossible series of concerts, but I think we will look back at this film how many years from now, let's hope this is all over you know, sooner than we, than we think it might be, um, really is a document of what we've all been through and how culture and how artists responded. Uh, uh, this is such an important document of this historical moment. Well, so well, thank, thank you, you, first of all, yeah, to yeah. both of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, I'll ask a few questions, then we'll open it up to the folks in the audience. Um, talk to us a bit, just to first, about how the two of you came together to work on this project. I'll let, uh, I'll let Blake, uh, he's, a, he, he's a great storyteller, I'll let him, yeah. It's absolutely not true. Um, but, uh, so I first, I knew of Wayne because my uh, old college roommate and, and good friend, Matt Duckworth, uh, Matt, Matt Kirksey, yeah. um, was always involved with the lips, and so I knew of you and of, and of the lips through him um, throughout college and everything. And then kind of fast forward, I was, I was shooting weddings um, after college and everything, and then I got a phone call at a wedding reception. I think it was like around 10 p.m. Or I got a text around 10 p.m. and it was like, hey, Blake, uh, Wayne might be reaching out to you, you know, you know, to come shoot this thing like tomorrow, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't the space bubble call. No, 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 no. It was like a thing for like a late night yeah, thing. Yeah, so yeah. An another video, yeah. 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 And I was, previous to the, yeah. yeah, and I was like, well, I, I could maybe do that. I'm like, you know, I feel the imposter syndrome was coming in, but like, I was like, you know, tripods and cameras, like that'll be okay. And that shoot doesn't happen, and it turns into like a one-on-one -on -one music video shoot with you. And that was like, well, now I gotta actually do something, you know, harder than that, you know. But so that was when I first kind of met him. I actually pulled up to his house, and, I, and you had had me get uh, police decals on the side of my car. <laughs> For the yeah. music video, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, well, we before needed, I met you in two, the flat. Yeah. We needed two police cars in there. Right. Yeah. And I had a car. Right. The white Volvo, and right. I, you have kind of a reasonably family-ish kind of car. <laughs> and, uh, of course, CRV. I know a guy that can give us some Oklahoma City police decals yeah. on that. Yeah. Put them on our cars. So we had, yeah, your car was done up as a police car. Right. We had with sirens and everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll stop in a second talking about this, but, but I was going to say, you know, it's just before I even met him, I had, I had, you know, pulled up with all these decals on my car and like, you know, this is going to be a wild ride. And I thought that it might just be that for a few weeks and you were two, about two years later now. And this has been a it, very wow. yeah, yeah. wild yeah. time for me. But, yeah. So it's all thanks to Matt. So thank you, Matt. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and from a filmmaking perspective, uh, well, a couple of questions. What particular challenges did you face because of the unusual nature of these performances you were documenting? A and also, how did you come up the, collectively with the visual feel? You have this you know, multicolored concert footage. You have the, the sort of extreme close-up uh, interviews. You've got graphics throughout. Can you talk a bit about how the, the look of the film came together? Well, I mean, the look of the concert stuff, I mean, that's, that's just Blake. And he had, he, he had a crew of uh, probably 12 guys uh, that he knows that he, he could trust to say, here, you're going to be at this position, you know, shoot Steven and shoot, you know, Nick with your, from your perspective. And, you know, he'd have some other guys. Everybody would have a, a sort of position. Um, and, um, of course, it's all still, you know, we're all masking up and we can't really communicate that well, you know. Um, but it really is, a, a Blake really had this team of people that I think were ready to be like, let's, let's do something cool here. Uh, luckily, the Criterion, the place where we played, is downtown Oklahoma City. Um, it's an amazing, amazing theater. And it's got a balcony um, on top where, you know, no, n none of the audience were up there, so it was a lot of great shots you could get from the top. Um, the light show was just insane, and um, and Blake would just take a lot of chances. I, it, I don't think you see it in, in, the, in the video, but he had the set list taped to his leg, you know, but if you saw it, it would be upside down, but he could read his, the set list and be like, oh yeah, this is what we're 
we're going to do. And we didn't have any time really to, you know, uh, map out what we were going to do, or rehearse, or any any of that stuff. You just sort of there's so much stuff you've got to do, and then I'm just like, well, just shoot it unless fucking see what happens, you know. Um, but luckily, you know, it wasn't just one show, you know, and so, you know, um, I don't know if we had 12 people on, you know, every show, but we, you know, we would continue to shoot. Um, it was 10 shows altogether. don't know if we shot every show, but, you know, that would, that helps a lot, you know, to think, oh, well, this worked and that worked, do more of this, do more of that, or if a song or two didn't work, it's like, let's get those songs the next night or whatever. I mean, you know, this 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 the first time anybody gets to see this this uh, documentary. But if you watch closely, you know, the drummer's shirts are changing from the beginning of the song to the end, and Steven's shirt is changing. I I look pretty much the same, but you know, it's like from night to night. We we weren't thinking at all of you know in film terms, continuity and stuff like that. It's you know, you're just doing the best you can to play these shows and hope that no one. Uh, you know, gets uh, ill or anything, and that, that it all works. Um, so the last thing that we were thinking about, really, was like, what are we going to do? Um, but it, you know, it, it looks so spectacular. I mean, the concert footage is so spectacular. Um, and, and everybody that was involved in it um, would always say, we should make it, we should make a documentary out of this. Um, I think the last show that we did, um, you can barely see him. It's Quickly, there was a there's a guy that comes to all of our shows. Uh, we we say he's the real Santa Claus. He always comes dressed in a Santa Claus suit, um, but he's not in very good health, you know. Um, and he's in this space bubble, and you know he can't breathe very well even when he's just walking around. And I remember I told Blake I said if if he dies in the space bubble, you've got to get that for the documentary, you know. <laughs> Santa Claus dies, you know, and it would be horrible, but I mean, this is just what you're like, I don't really know what's going to happen, you know. Um, so every, everybody that we would, you know, that would be there and stuff would just be like, we should make a documentary out of this. And, um, you know, and it was really only, once it all seemed to go good, um, we thought, well, this is kind of a great story. And then we started to piece together interviews and, you know, the whole time we're doing stuff, I mean, Blake would be, with us all the time is shooting stuff and you know behind the scenes stuff that ends up not being so behind the scenes because now it's it's in in the you know in the film here so yeah i mean as as thrown together as it can be but you know it's 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 you know it's music it's it's about a it's about a concert so it's like you know once that stuff seemed to work um you know, figuring out what to talk about and what what the real story was. Um, yeah, you just kind of kind of hope it kind of hope it makes sense and kind of hope that it is entertaining at the same time. You know, and little by little, it was like, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah, and also, you know, I would be around shooting what I would think are you know some behind the scenes moments, and you'd look across the room, and there's just something else that's so DIY, and and you know, there's not crews from out of state coming and setting up these bubbles you know the, the bubbles are going to his house but also you know there's a quick uh, clip of Wayne mopping the stairs and um, he had been mopping the whole stage but had, didn't tell me and I was like you should probably you know that'd be cool footage but I think in his mind it's just like we're just doing this that's just kind of there's a lot of moment you know he's actually putting some of the contents of the space bubble stuff into the space bubbles and people don't see those things there's stuff I didn't even get to catch because it's just happening and isn't even really like it's just kind of assumed this is how the band does it. It's all very DIY, but done, you know, legit, legitimately. But you know, yeah. I mean, we're just we're just doing it ourselves, you know. And there's no, I don't know. I think you know, there's there's probably an idea of when people are making, uh, you know, big projects like this, big endeavors, you know, that someone has a script somewhere or someone kind of knows what we're going to do. It's like. I kind of have an idea what we'll do, but uh, you don't, you know, it's like, we're going to start to make it, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, but this is a, you know, it's a concert documentary, so it's not, it's not, a, you know, a strict narrative that, you know, you have to think about too much. Were there concert docs that one or both of you love, whether it's Stop Making Sense or Shut Up and Play the Hits or yeah, yeah. so many more that you thought about once you were in the editing process of, oh, hey, the, you know, 
that band had a good approach to figuring out uh, yeah, how to Yeah, yeah, all, all the time. A, yeah. I mean, this was this was before uh, the the bigger uh, Beatles thing came out. Um, was it just last Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but I would re reference the Beatles' uh, Let It Be, even though I don't think, you know, it, hardly anybody had seen it, except for I saw it when it was in the theaters, you know, when it came out um, in 1970 or whenever it was. Um, and uh, yeah, and I would I would reference things like Woodstock and, you know, but I don't really watch them that much. You know, I don't watch, you know, unless I really love the group. I, I just don't really think of, you know, but yeah, there would be some, but, you know, um, I mean, we've made lots in, of music videos as the Flaming Lips, so it's not that, you know, everybody kind of just gets up and does it, and, you know, you're like, I think it's going to work, you know? <laughs> well, the, the band's aesthetic is so particular and so unique, and obviously that's all over the screen here, and then you bring your own sensibility to it. Obviously, it's a wonderful match. Uh, let's take some questions yeah. from the audience. Yeah. Any, anything. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, please. Oh, is it you? Yeah, yeah. So the question is, how difficult uh, was it for the band members to hear in the space bubbles? Well, it's it was impossible, really, you know. But <laughs> but we had worked out a monitor system, you know, at our rehearsal space where we would we would all show up and we would all get into our space bubbles and then we'd start to talk about how we're gonna fix up these things. So Katie's, Katie's going out. Hey, th those boys did so great. They lasted the whole, the whole show. Yeah, Woo! yeah. I'll see you in just a little bit. Oh, seeing baby Bloom being just like a, a year old. Oh my gosh, it's so, it's the, it's the greatest movie ever made, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the technical things are, you know, I mean, if we couldn't overcome those, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have done it and that's, you know, for musicians to play and to enjoy it and to be able to interact with each other and do all that, um, it's difficult in just a normal situation. Um, you know, it's a lot of equipment, a lot of people plugging stuff in, a lot of sound checking and all that, and, and all that would just go out the window because we didn't have a crew. I mean, there was only there was only so many people involved doing this, um, but um, we found that we could do a lot of it ourselves. But luckily, you know, this theater that we did this stuff in, uh, the Criterion in, in Bricktown in Oklahoma City, you know, they basically let us be in there for almost a year. You know, we could, we set up our stuff and we could go in, we wouldn't go in every day, but pretty intense amount of time to go in, keep trying things, keep trying things. And that changes everything. You know, it's not like you're just pretending to be doing it and then when people get in here, oh, it's real. We're really just doing it. And then it's, the, the difference is, oh, there's people now. And there, there, there weren't, you know, when we, but it's the, the real thing. So it's not like we, you know, had to abstractly think, well, will this work at a, you know, on the stage? We would be on that stage all the time. Um, and there's so many, uh, you know, things you can get now that, you know, even, uh, you know, five and 10 years ago, would have been difficult for us all to run. Um, just started to figure it out. So we had little monitor systems, uh, in-air monitor systems, that everybody in their own little space bubble could adjust the levels. Um, it's all these ridiculous things. And and I have to say, uh, the more we did it, the the better our shows and the the better everybody sounded. The, it's you know, for as ridiculous as it was. These end up being the best shows we've ever done. The most meticulous, the most attention to detail, the most, you know, like make the songs really, really work. Um, you know, once you get in there and you're doing like, uh, already doing a ton of work, it, it doesn't seem like anything to do a little bit more work to make it even better and make it better. And that thing of, you know, us enjoying it while we're doing it, you know, if that's not there, um, you know the audience. The, you can tell, you know, and there's a there's a there's a joy and just a this great energy that you get from people playing and it working and it being fun and all that. That uh, the section I, I don't know if you remember the section where Stephen talks about the 
the levels <laughs> of the performance. Um, I mean, Stephen, uh, he's not here tonight. He's going to be here tomorrow, so I can, I can talk about him. Um, he's such a masterful musician. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to even talk about what, what an in, insanely masterful musician he is. But he's, you know, he's still not a very uh, comfortable performer. You know, I mean, that's really our whole dilemma. You know, the, the, the thing about being rock stars and all that, it's like it's a show-off-y kind of world. You know, you want to stand up there and say, hey, look at me. Fuck, don't I look cool? This is cool. Fuck, this is, you know, look at me, you know. And, and we're just not really like that. You know, it looks like we're like that, but we're just not really like that. You know, we, we love the idea that we're playing our music and we love our audience. Our audience is... is it's, I say it all the time, it's the greatest audience any, any, any musician could ever play for, you know? It's their, they listen, they listen with love, and it affects them, you know? And so it's a, it's a great, you know, responsibility, but a great honor, but a great, like, magnificent thing, even though we're all completely scared shitless, you know, <laughs> still. I mean, we, you know, we'll be playing now for almost 40 years, but every time we play, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, I, I wish it was just over and everybody loved it, you know. <laughs> um, and that's just how we are, you know. I mean, we, you know, we, we don't like ego, you know. And ego and rock stars and all that, you know, that's just all together. And that's just not what we do, you know. We're just not, it's not about us. It's about, uh, you know, I, I talk about it like the gods of music, have have allowed the Flaming Lips uh, to make some of this most beautiful music there could ever be, and they let us do it. You know, it's like I don't know where where music comes from. I don't know where songs come from. You know, you just kind of have to be sitting there and hope that the thing that you're feeling, uh, you know, comes through, and everybody else can hear it. And we've been insanely lucky that. We've done that a couple of times. And we don't really fucking know how it, it, to do it. You know, you just have to sit there and hope, hope it happens. So, you know, we don't look at it like it's a performance, like look at us. We really look at a Flaming Lips show as like, we've got these songs. And we'll put on this crazy, you know, intense show so that we can really, you know, do these songs with as much heart and you know, our, ourselves in it. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, I just say, it, it's just a motherfucker. You know, there's just no, <laughs> there's just no, you know, you can't prepare for it, you know. So yeah, so it was, you know, like early on, if we couldn't overcome these obstacles of playing and enjoying it and being able to cue off each other and all that, uh, we wouldn't have done it. So that would be, that would be early, early on, um, you know, rehearsing and stuff, yeah. Great. Time yeah. for a couple more questions. Who else? Yeah, I'll, I'll pick some. Yeah, is, is, Cash, is that you? There's, there's a light on me. I think it's you, yeah. You look cool, man. I'm glad you're here. Can you play it again? Can we play the, the movie again? <laughs> um, tomorrow at well, two We o'clock. can, but we can, we, can only, we can do it tomorrow. So if you guys can stay, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get you in tomorrow. We, I don't think we can do it tonight, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, would, do you have one? Yeah. I love you, Cash. You mean uh, like during the She Don't Use Jelly song where I, yeah. Um, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, when, I'm, I'm fearless when I'm up there. Oh, oh, sorry. The question was, yeah. Um, you're referring to when I, I'm jumping out into the audience and then I come back on the stage. You can hear the, the microphone. I'm hitting the stage and all that. Uh, did I, you're saying like, did I regret that or something? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, that's, yeah. She, she's asking if that defect, did future performances. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't go out in the audience that much, you know, only because it's uh, like they don't know I'm going to do it. And uh, the one time I did it, the mayor, he's, I don't know if he's still here. Oh, there he is. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I love you, David Holt. I love you. I love you so much. Um, um, 
he was he was the one that I was on top of in that in that footage that you've seen, um, and I don't think you knew I was coming. I didn't really know I was going to do it either. It's just sort of like, oh, here we go, you know. So um, no, it wouldn't be something that I would. Um, I don't do it that much, you know. Um, and I can recover quickly. I mean, I'm, there's a lot of uh, adrenaline going and all that. And you don't really think about it too much, you know. I I really just am trying to to sing the best I can. And I know that sometimes it's like, oh, it's it just gets out of control. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we got some more questions. Come on. A anything. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll do you. I'll, 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 go, I'll start here and I'll, I'll get everybody else. So we were at the Mars concert and even before people said, you're going to Oklahoma City, what are you Oh, yeah, yeah. We we probably did. Um, I mean, I mean, Zach, did you leave something? In, oh, you didn't. Okay, okay. So I don't know if you if you heard the question. It was like of all the concerts and all the weirdos. Yeah, I mean that's Zach. He 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 messed with every one of them. Um, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing overly disgusting or weird or anything, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, vomiting. Yeah, it's. Thank but, you for the two mile wipe down. Every, yeah. Uh, night. <laughs> yeah, Zach, you're the man. You 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 are the man. So if, if someone threw up, I mean, you, you would quickly get them another bubble. Get you know, we wouldn't clean that one up. We'd just we'd have get them another another bubble and say let's fix this up and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, and but you know it's it's true. I'm, I'm sure your friends thought they were absolutely yeah they were there and 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 um, it's you know it wasn't it I it, I think it would depend on the night. The night that 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 Mayor Holt was there um, was the hottest night, and and that was part of our you know luck that most nights we did it. Um, people remember that winter. It was it was. It's cold, you know, and it's a big theater, so it was it was easy to to go in there and be in a slightly, you know, claustrophobic, sweaty bubble for a little bit because it wasn't it wasn't that hot, and so um, just by sheer luck. And then by by time we got to the end of uh, the shows in March, that would that would start to get like this is going to be uncomfortable for everybody. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't uh, you know just by sheer luck, just the timing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you know, it's sort of like, it's one thing to um, see pictures of it and videos, but, you know, once you're in there, but I, I know, and I, I understand, you, you know, um, if you have that uh, sensation, you know, you can't just turn it off, you know, um, but yeah, I, I think there were, there were a few, um, and we were... I think there were a few people, I mean, you have to remember this theater that we were working in, it's a giant theater, you know, um, holds, uh, you know, 4,000 people, and then we're just using the very bottom of it, and if people had a lot, a lot of difficulties, um, Zach would allow them to sit, you know, up at the top, wear your mask and just sit up there and don't worry about it, you know, and that would just be a handful of people in a giant, giant space. Um, so there was, yeah, lots of ways to accommodate everybody that was willing to, you know, work on it, you know. 
I don't, I don't know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a guy that broke his leg the, the morning of... <laughs> wow. Uh, and you can, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Zach is, Zach is, he, he really is so uh, accommodating and so creative and so full of energy and ideas and, um, I mean, he, he, I mean that's why he's, he's such a great feature in, in, in the film, because it's like, if you don't have people like that, people like Scott, our manager, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we would shoot with Scott where we would try to sound very professional and, you know, like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. But the times that we really love is when he's just crying, like, oh, my gosh, why are we doing this? And, <laughs> oh, my... And, and it's, it's... So if you don't have people, you know, willing to, you know, go with you and do these things, like, like Blake and his crew, I mean, if... if you know, there, there's most people would have just said, "Dude, there's this kind of too dangerous. I don't, I don't want to do this." And I, and I would understand, you know. Um, so as we went, you know, I think this enthusiasm and just this willingness to want to do something, you know, um, I think that that in that sort of you know got everybody's motivation m more and more. And yeah, you know, but without someone like Zach, you know, being able to go out there, he has to talk to these people every night, he has to convince them this is gonna work and it has to be fun and he's, we have to hurry and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of mechanisms that have to work right. Um, you know, we wouldn't want people to be waiting in line for an hour and then it'd take an hour to get in your space bubble and then we play for an hour and a half and then it takes an hour to get out. I mean, who would want that? That would just be, so, you know, you, you, we would we'd try to get it down to where it's like, it's just under 20 minutes from, being outside to us playing, you know, a typical time of like if you parked your car and went into a concert, you know. So those things, uh, those are the impossible things. It's, it's, you know, to do all that and do it in a hurry and so people can keep their energy and it's fun and they have to use the bathroom and all these mechanisms, you know. Um, those are the things that are they're difficult to work out. But they're fun. I mean, for creative people, it's... You know, problem solving is, I mean, that's what creative people do all the time. You know, the, you, you, you have a problem? Well, let's figure it out. You know, it out. Yeah, yeah, you know. And I know we, I know yeah. we got a yeah, yeah. over there. Is that the mayor? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I got the mayor. All right. <laughs> someday, someday maybe, yeah, yeah. Hands down, the mayor was the most enthusiastic. I, I would say that, yeah. And, and the way he leads uh, the Flaming Lips enthusiasm at our concerts is the way he leads Oklahoma City. That's, yeah, that's, that's true, you know. He's, he's, the, he's, the, he's right there saying, here, this, this is going to work, we're going to do it. Um, yeah. Um, it was... You know, it would be difficult because there isn't, there is no gauge of, of what you what to do in there, and and um, we would pump the audience. We would have microphones so that any amount of clapping and stuff that's going on, we would amplify it so everybody would know, hey, this is a concert. This isn't, you know, this is really happening. And the more we did that, I mean, like I said, we were in there for, you know, almost a year. And we would work it out where there would be speakers in the balcony that would have the audience in it so they could hear themselves. And that's a, that's a big part of a concert is that, in, you know, that energy that's sort of created by the audience themselves. You know, they create it, they feel it. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a great sort of closed uh, system, you know. So, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was stuff that we would think about each time and it would get better. And, you know, there would be repeat people, you know, in the audience. So some people would be there. I think there are some, some people that saw uh, virtually every show, you know. Um, and they would, 
they would sort of lead the, you know, everybody too, to know, oh, well, here's, we can do this, we can do this, let's, you know, uh, jump in, jumping around and be as loud as they can, but. But it is kind of, yeah. it's, it's hard to do, to mosh pit in the bubble, because that grid is pretty tight, like it's, yeah. you can't really yeah. like roll around and move out of your yeah. zone, your little square, like yeah. it's You'd pretty yeah. hard to, it's yeah. hard to, you know, during the, the um, especially during the music video shoot, or really during the shows in general, it's hard to even squeeze through them outside of the bubble to get like yeah. a video shot, yeah. much less like, you know, wiggle your bubble between someone else. Yeah. 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 I yep, yep. I'll get you guys, yeah. Um, you know, I think they're in a casual way. You know, I think, um, I, I don't, I, there wasn't any like, it wasn't like the Rolling Stones or anybody did, you know. Um, <laughs> um, and that people would be curious, you know, but I would just know, like, um, you know, unless you have someone like Zach, I mean, you just can't. If you're just going to, if you think you're just going to go up there and, and play a guitar and all this stuff is going to happen, well, that's not what we're doing. You know, this is a, this is a big effort by a lot of people um, to, to do this, and if, if you're not used to doing it, there'd just be no way we could just hand it over and say, good luck, you know. So, yeah, people were interested, but not really. I think, you know, it's you just... Can, you can see as, as all the band members are getting into the bubble how difficult it is just to do that. Yeah, that's, that's part of that, that beautiful struggling thing at the very end of it. Like, yeah, they've got to crawl in that bubble and then they've got to close it. And it yeah, you know, um, and you know, it's I mean, lot uh, lots of bands, that, and I mean, it's not a put down. It's just most most guys that play music, you know, they they want to go up on stage, and someone hands them a guitar, and they play, and they here take my guitar, fuck it, I'm, that's all I do, you know. And you know, the fl <laughs> Flaming Lips aren't like that. I mean, we just, we do everything, and we want to do everything, you know. We every every part of every bit about it. Um, we're involved in it. Um, so I think that, you know, I think anybody that else would want to do it would just be like, that's just too much fucking work. Who, you know, I'm a musician. I don't want to, I don't want to do that stuff. Right. I mean, Matt, Matt and Nick, I mean, Matt and Nick are sitting right there. I mean, it, like they figured out the monitor system, the playback systems, all these things. Um, and yeah, it's it's uh, you know we're not just it's not it's not a, it's not a party. I mean, at, in the in the big picture, it's a great great party because we we've made it happen. But it's not it's not just a bunch of people um, taking acid and jamming out, you know. Yeah, and the the drummers were really like running a lot of the show too. They, they had to trigger the videos and and things that y'all weren't really doing prior to the bubble shows, right? Because I mean, I came around when those were the first shows I actually was a part of on the yeah. crew side. And so it's like learning these new things to even yeah, run. Yeah. 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 It, that it, that are better and more intuitive and more music oriented and everything about it yeah yeah your, your guys playing is spectacular oh man uh, yeah. Uh, yeah we we've got time for one uh, yeah, one know. more question yeah i don't know how long everybody thought they were going to stay so yeah yeah <laughs> up to you wave uh, let me let me see yeah 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 Here, oh I'll, I'll get oh okay, right, look i'll get you yeah 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 hey i just want to say thank you Mike. yeah <laughs> oh well, you, well, yeah, well, thank you, and, and you know, and, and Cash is a great star in it, I mean, his, you know, I mean, all, uh, do seeing his Instagrams the next day and all that, just like, oh, man, yeah, yeah, it's just amazing, yeah. He's always worked, like, learning about philosophy, and just the fact that you mean that little beep, beep? Yeah, well, that's a good question, yeah. Um, Stephen Ed would have a watch on. You know, back in the day, yeah. um, I think it's uh, Soft Bulls and Era. He had a watch, and we would, you know, we'd be recording. I mean, but you know, he's he's going through an amplifier, but we're also recording right there, and he's got a mic, you know, that he's going to talk into, and we're recording his the way his fingers actually hit the keys, 
and it goes through an amp. So all these things are isolated, and um, you know, his, he's playing, but you know, on the one microphone, you can't hear it, what he's playing, and his watch goes off, and it's in the song. And then, you know, I'll be sitting there with Dave Fridman, and I'll be like, that, heck, his fucking watch went off. That's cool, you know? <laughs> and yeah, you know, and then as, we, as time would go on, you know, if this is 1997 or you know, 1998 or whenever, we would have songs where we would say, this song could use that little watch bleep in there. <laughs> and we would go back. I mean, I mean, people don't realize this. We have everything that we've ever recorded. I mean, I have it all. I, you know, it's not like it's in someone else's hands. I mean, I have all of it. And we would go dig out the watch bleep and we'd put it in a song 10 years later and just be like, yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and it's just another little, you know, little little spice that, you know, the Flaming Lips would do that no one else would probably want to do. You know, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. See, I, that's <laughs> why when I say the Flaming Lips audience is so great, it's like to be listening and to be curious about that and to think, why is that in there? You know, like why didn't you take that out or whatever? It's like, yeah, you know, it's, I know, it's 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 great. Yeah. We, we've got to let our friends from Circle Cinema uh, wrap up okay. uh, this theater, but thank you so much, Blake and yeah. Lane. This was spectacular. Yeah. 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 Thank you all for coming out. Uh, encore screening tomorrow right here at 2 p.m. Come on back for a second round. Tell your friends. I think there are still a few tickets available. World premiere right here in Tulsa. Thank you again so much. Amazing. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. All right.